This is my Coors Latte. So what are we doing today, Frank? So I was thinking back about back in the good old days where I got started because I, I was coming home uh, this afternoon and my boys will be here in a little bit and uh, I decided I wanted to start cooking out here in this little kind of cool little cut down spot in my yard. And I was getting all set up and I was like, you know, I kind of wonder, like there's a lot of guys out there that are just getting started in barbecue, I'm finding out. You know, they, they got started because of COVID or whatever, they wanted to start cooking. And I figured I would just start out with the very, very, very most basics. Like, what do I need to even cook barbecue? So here's the 10 things you need to cook on your UDS drum smoker. So this is lump charcoal. That's item number one. You gotta have charcoal if you're gonna cook on a Draftmaster or a UDS drum smoker. Um, I prefer lump, not briquettes. Um, this is actually a company called Timber Charcoal. This is lump charcoal. This is actually shreds of a tree. You know, they got different sizes, different pieces and stuff like that. Now my hands are getting dirty. Then you're gonna need to get the charcoal started. But well, we got a chimney here. These uh, charcoal chimneys are designed with this little grate in the middle. This is the cheapest thing I could find. Um, it's kind of inverted and the bottom is up a few inches. So you literally fill this chimney up with charcoal and you light a fire underneath of it. And mother nature makes this thing light vertically like this. You're gonna have to have something that you can light the charcoal with so it gets started. You can wad up newspaper, things like that. But this is what I like. There's all different kinds of stuff like that. There's uh, Royal Oak makes one. This is B&B. &B. These are what I call biscuits but it's little uh, squares that you can set underneath of the chimney. You literally just like set those two things down and you click or click light them, put your chimney over it and it lights from the bottom up. So you're gonna have to light these things somehow. So we use this thing here. I call this a clicker. So you, it's got a little flame. You can't see it out here. That's what I call a clicker because you click it. So you use that, you would get this thing clicked and you would just light the edge of these br bricks and then that lights your chimney. There's a uh, another video on our channel called How to Light Your UDS Drum Smoker. You should watch that if you want to know how to light this thing. The other thing you're going to need is uh, some little wood chunks. So when I'm lighting my uh, charcoal basket, you'll see in that video I just mentioned, a couple little chunks of wood. I sometimes use a splinter about that long or I'll use these little fist sized pieces. You just set them right on top of the charcoal basket, then you dump your chimney on top of them. So you need to have some kind of wood chunks or something for flavor. Get my Coors Latte handy here. So now we're gonna talk about food prep. First, you're gonna need some kind of a cooking surface. Um, I like these little plastic fold up tables because I can wash them easy and they fold up for easy storage. Uh, the second thing you're gonna need is some kind of gloves. So I don't like to use my bare hands because I'm handling charcoal and they get dirty and stuff. So I put these on. These are called cotton liners. They're 99 cents a pair. You can get them at any farm store or Harbor Freight. What kind of gloves are these? These are nitrile gloves. These are the thinnest, cheapest freaking gloves you can get. I, I don't like these, but Harbor Freight was out. That's the Hardy brand. These are three mil. I like the seven mil. And the good thing about these knit gloves is them knits, the holes in it, are like they insulate your hands. So once you put cottons on, I call them cottons. Once you put cottons on, and then you put these rubbers over the top of them, you can pick up stuff that's hot. You can pick up a, a cookie sheet that's like 300 degrees. You can pick that thing up and walk with it. It won't burn. It's like having pot holders on your hands. Okay, now I'm not actually cooking this today, but this is a brisket. You're gonna need something to cook, some kind of meat. Uh, you know, this is a full packer brisket. It's froze right now. So for the guys that are wondering, wanting to tell me so bad you can't cook froze meat, but uh, just anything, briskets, pork butts, you know, you can do ribs, you can do chicken, you can do tri-tips, anything that you can bake in an oven, you can cook on this smoker. You're gonna need some kind of seasonings. These are a few of my favorites right here. This is my boy Cosmo, you guys know him. Anything by him is good stuff. This is my main man there, Phil Wingo, Pork Mafia. This is his uh, steak and burger seasoning. I call it SPG. This is uh, Pit Hustle, my buddies down in the boot heel of Missouri. Uh, Johnny Briquette. Anyway, this is their Hustle Dust. This is a good second layer. 
you're gonna layer those seasonings on. You can watch a video that we did on our channel here a few days ago. It's the backyard ribs where I hang an entire case of ribs. That's eight, that many slabs of ribs in that can. You should check it out. Anyway, we got knives. You're gonna have to have something to trim that brisket with. There's a whole selection here. These are, these are ranging from you know, just normal everyday chef knives to cheap ones that you get at Walmart. This little old stainless china thing don't even have a name on it. This is a chef's knife. It's designed for doing that. This is a scimitar. I call it that just because that's what Bugs Bunny cartoons called it. You can also do like that, but it's a chopper. Then you got the deboning knife. This one's a little bit flexible. So you can use this here to cut around bones and thin spots and stuff. You're gonna need some kind of foil pan. I prefer stainless steel pans, but the foil ones are very convenient because you can throw them away. This is what's called a half pan. This pan fits very well inside that drum. You can fit a full pork butt in here. If you're gonna fit that brisket in a pan, you need a little bit bigger. That would be called a full buffet pan. So you would get what's called a full buffet pan to fit that brisket in. It'll fit on the drum too, but you gotta fold the corners up just a little bit to get it to fit in there. And then whenever you're wrapping, you're gonna need some foil. Two kinds of foil in this world, red and green. Red is thin and it tears too easy. Bones poke holes in it really easy. Green is the actual heavy duty. They have to say heavy duty on everything or they think you think it'll suck. So, And then you gotta have a meat thermometer of some kind. This is a Teltru Thermopen. Not Teltru, Thermoworks. Thermopen, thermal pen. What this is, you fold it in and it shuts off. This is the MK4 or something like that. It's got a silicone sleeve with a magnet with magnets on the back so it sticks to iron. Anyway, this will save you a lot of energy. The biggest thing is just make sure everything's food safe. The thing that's good about these is their instant read. So within three seconds, this display tells you what it actually is. Other thermometers, you gotta leave them in there for a long time. So on a cooking surface, you don't need to have a huge table. You know, I've cooked on, I've used milk crates with a board on them. I've done all kinds of silly stuff. These tables here are about 39 bucks at like Home Depot. They're cheap. Uh, that's what I prefer um, is something like this because I can cut right on it and I'm not ruining the wife's countertop inside the house, you know. So you'll notice that my table is higher than yours. And you know why that is? Because of an old competition barbecue trick that a guy taught me. Actually, I'd got, I learned that in Joplin back at the Tornado when I was cooking with OBR before it was OBR. But you take some PVC pipe. This is two inch PVC pipe and you cut them about two foot long and you stick the legs down in there and it raises this up to about 36 inches. So you don't have to bend over and break your back while you're cooking. Now, if you've been paying attention, we're talking about cooking on a Draftmaster drum smoker here. So that's what this one here is. This is the uh, flat black edition Draftmaster drum smoker built for you. It's got one accessory on it that's not listed on that product is this thermometer shell for a magnetic thermometer. Let me get one. And you can stick this thermometer on the side and it won't fall off. It's stainless steel, but it's magnetic, right? So your thermometer is always handy. So this one here shown on the dolly. You can get that dolly. It's easy for rolling around on concrete and we don't scrimp on the casters. Those are made by a company called Faultless. It's one of the best casters on the market. They're non-marking. This is your smoke stack right here. You open that all the way up when you're cooking. This is your air inlet. Very easy to just open and shut. Air goes in, air goes out. Put your finger in there to adjust this. When you do that on one of these inlets, you'll be cooking about 225 to 240, and that'll cook like that at least 20 hours, sometimes longer than that. Anyway, you got two air inlets. If you want to cook at 300, run both of these with your finger in it like that. And that's, that's, it's that easy. That's all it takes to run this thing. You can go do whatever, play with the kids, go in the woods, go hunting. Inside, we got a cooking grate. That's a, that cooking grate is the same size as the one in your Weber kettle. So it's dual purpose. You can pull this one out and put it in your Weber kettle if you want and use it in there. Pulls out like that. Then we got our baffle plate in there. This is the super tuner baffle plate. This, we call it the super tuner because you can bend these little tabs and you can tune that however you want it so that you can prevent spikes in temperature and flare-ups. Underneath of there, we've got a charcoal basket. That charcoal basket is 12 by 12 and it's nine inches deep and it holds about 15 pounds of lump charcoal or a little more than a half a bag right at. And then you got a heat shield and a block off plate. The combination of the basket the block off plate and the heat shield with that super tuner baffle plate is what makes this the most efficient drum smoker on the market right now today. 
All right, guys, that's the 10 things that you need to cook on your UDS drum smoker. So look in the link below. If you're looking to build one of these yourself or you want me to build one for you, click that link down below and you'll be taken to a page on our website that's more descriptive than this video. And, uh, you know, we'll get one going for you. Appreciate you. But by the way, like and subscribe to this channel and all that stuff because I always forget to say that. Um, anyway, appreciate you.